You can tell by the title of the note, we're talking about bed mass today. But before we do that, we have to talk about something else. So we're going to do that first. And uh, there's some technical pieces to this, sort of. So I think I'm just going to get us started here. If I write something like this, uh, no, scratch that. <laughs> Wait, that's what I just did. Two, that's what I want. Put a two to the three. I was trying to decide whether we should do three to the two or two to the three. Two to the three is going to be a little bit more interesting. Okay, two to the three. Here's some terminology. We call the entire thing a power. Now, some of these terms get kind of used interchangeably, and that's fine. But technically speaking, we call the entire thing a power. What's the three called? It's called an exponent. So when I say, what's the exponent, I'm asking for three. The whole thing we call a power. And what is the two called? Terminology is often really important because I'm going to use these words or other people in the room are going to use these words. Teachers in the future are going to use these words. And if you don't know what they mean, you're going to be like, I don't know what they're talking about. So you do need to know these words. And if there's ever one that you know we've covered but you can't remember what it is, ask. People so often don't ask because they're nervous to ask. They think that, that, I don't know, they're going to look stupid or I'm not going to want to answer that question because I've already said it. Ask so that you can follow and know. It's always a good thing. Does anybody know what the two is called? In particular for something we're doing next week, we really need to know this. It's called the base. So the two is the base, the three is an exponent, and the whole thing we call a power. And what do exponents mean? You... I think know this, so we're not reteaching this. We're talking about exponents today. We're going to talk about more exponents in a different way next week. But what does an exponent mean? A quick review. It kind of does, but it doesn't mean 2 times 3, right? It doesn't mean 2 times 3. If we wanted to say 2 times 3, we'd say 2 times 3. It's not a different way of saying multiplication. But our brain sometimes plays that trick and does 2 times 3 when it's 2 to the 3. Yes, it's three twos multiplied by each other. So this is two times two times two. Notice that there's three of them because of the exponent. And what is two times two times two? It's eight. Two times three is six. Two to the three is eight. They're totally different numbers. So be careful. Does that make sense? We got that now. Any questions? Because exponents are in bed mass, right? So that's why we need to make sure that we're on the game, on the ball here. But there's something even more important that I want to talk to you about. Just write down this first part. Don't write that bottom part down yet. Write down the, the line here and all four of those you can write down. Don't write down the summary. Because all the work we're going to do has to do with integers. So we need to know how to evaluate exponents with integers. It's not enough to just remember what exponents are and how they are like repeated multiplication. So they're like multiplication, but they're not quite the same as multiplication. We also need to know how to, how to handle them with negative signs. The good news is it's very similar to just multiplying. So I've got very similar questions here. What's the difference between these four questions? Or the difference between the first two and the difference between the second two? Yeah. 
Right, exactly. One of them has brackets and one of them doesn't. Do you think that's going to matter? Turns out in this case it does. Some brackets are just for organizing and they don't necessarily matter. They're not, nece they're not needed. These ones are needed because they're going to give me two different answers. This one is like negative 5 times 5. This one is negative 5 times negative 5. Do you see the difference? What's my answer for the first one? Well, which one? Okay, good. Stop there. Negative 25, because you're very good. 5 times 5 is 25, and I've got one negative and one positive. So negative, right? That's what you were thinking. Very good. And what's the answer to the other one? Somebody else. Positive 25, because I have two negatives. So what's the difference here, folks? The difference is if the negative is in the brackets, it's included in the exponent. And I'm multiplying this whole thing times itself twice. This other one kind of means this. Negative outside, 5 squared on its own. 5 squared is 25 and there's a negative stuck out front. And these are two different questions, and they're two different circumstances, and they come up differently in different times, so we need to have notation to know which one's which. Does that make sense? Any questions about that? What about this one? It's the same idea. So what am I going to write for the first one? Yeah. Did we miss one little thing there, or did I just not hear you? Negative 5 times 5 times 5. And what? how am I going to write the next one? How is it different? Yes. Very good. Oops. Now, they may know what 5 times 5 times 5 is. Nice. And this first one has one negative, right? So my result will be negative 125. And 5 times 5 times 5 again, so it's 125. I've got three negatives, so my result is going to be Negative. So, hmm, very tricky. What, what's the rule that we can develop here to know when the result of an exponent is going to be negative versus when the result of an exponent is going to be positive? How can we figure this out? Does anybody, you don't have to get the whole thing. You don't have to get the right answer. Just Does anybody want to share any of their thinking on this? And how will I know that? Because like there's two, if you say there's two negatives, then it won't be positive. That's right. How will I know how many negative signs there will be? Anybody? Because of the exponent. The exponent, very good. So well done. The exponent will tell us if the exponent is even, I'll have an even number of negatives, and they'll cancel and be positive if it's in brackets. If the exponent is odd, an odd number like 3, 5, 7, don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to do 5 to the 7 without your calculator. <laughs> that would be hard. Um, if it's in brackets and the exponent's odd, I'm going to have an odd number of negatives, so the result will be negative. And that's what this little blurb says right here. So you can write that down. If the base of your exponent is not in brackets, the result is always negative. Right? We saw that in both cases. 
negative 5 squared and negative 5 cubed, we say cubed when we say to, to the 3, both ended up being negative. Whereas negative 5 all squared or negative 5 all cubed didn't work out that way. So if the base, remember, remember when we talked about terminology, what's the base of the exponent? I'm gonna, yeah, the big number, that's right. I'm going to let you finish writing this because I want you to listen to this next part. Okay, you'll get a chance to write this down. If you're still writing, I want you to just stop, take a pause, and look up here. We're going to go through these one at a time, starting with this first one over here. This is a bit of a trick question, so it's not about getting the answer right or wrong. It's about us learning together. What's the base of this exponent, or of this power that's happening here? What's the base? Yeah. Five. What's the base of this one? Negative 5. See the difference? Good job. The difference is the base of this one is just 5. The base of this one includes the negative. This is why the small details of writing brackets in the right place, using brackets when you're supposed to, matter in mathematics. They really, really matter. And developing good habits around these things really, really help, which is why I'm going to continue to push you a little bit to sort of do things looking the right way, showing your work properly. Trust me, it'll make your life easy in the long run. All right, you could try all four of those if you want. Does anybody know what the first one is? 81. How did you get that? Yeah. Oh, nice. So 3 times 3 is 9, and the other 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 times 9 is 81. Why did you think it was positive? Very good. The negative is in the brackets, and there's four of them. Again, that's maybe that's on the outer limits of what we'll ask you to do without a calculator. But I do feel like that's something you should be able not just know, but be able to figure out. Three times three is nine. Nine times three is twenty-seven. That should be one you know. Twenty-seven times three. I mean, even if you have to kind of work it out on paper on the side, that's something that's doable. 
27 times 3 is not very big numbers. When in doubt, you can always write it out. That I didn't mean for that to rhyme. That wasn't supposed to be some kind of cheesy <laughs> math class saying. It was an accident. Um, Okay, negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Sometimes if you make mistakes, especially if you keep repeating mistakes, you're skipping too many steps. Go back to fundamentals and take the time to write it out in full. What does negative 3 all to the 4 mean? Negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. I'm going to talk about this twice today. There's an interesting thing that happens, and I don't know if it happens in other classes, but it happens in mathematics a lot where your brain plays tricks on you. I want you to shout out this answer. What's 3 times 4? See how many people came up with this quickly? When you see a 3 and a 4, and you think to yourself, well, exponents are like multiplication, your brain automatically starts thinking 12, which is wrong. We already established it's 81. Your brain automatically starts thinking it's 12. And some of us will make that mistake sometimes and not other times. And it's just your brain playing tricks on you. Because 3 times 4 is so easy. I just want to write it down. You know? So it, you got to stop and think, wait a minute, what does an exponent mean? Okay, let's get through the rest of these quickly. Negative 8 squared? Negative 64. Very good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that down here. And again, it's negative 8 times 8. 8 times 8 is 64. 1 negative is 64. Negative 4 cubed. That hand up? No. Negative 4 cubed. So very good. Negative 64. Again, that's a bit of a harder one, but 4 times 4 is 16. Times 4 again is 64. Not in brackets, so just one negative sign. And negative 7. Okay, this one's not one I don't think that you could do I mean, you could on paper, but this is a trickier one. Does anybody know what 7 cubed is? Uh, Very nice. And what, what, will it, what will the sign be? Negative. So negative 343. That one's, I wouldn't put that on a test with no calculator. But with a calculator, and we'll do that when I let you get use your calculators later, we'll talk about how you do exponents on your calculators if you've never done it before. You want to have a calculator that can do them easily. Any questions? Everybody got that? That was just the introduction to our lesson on bed mass, although it's not, it's not super long, so don't worry too much. But now we're actually going to talk about bed mass today. But you already know about bed mass. So again, this is, I hope, still just review. Everybody knows what bed mass stands for, right? So that's not what I'm asking right now. I'm asking a different question. I don't want to hear what it stands for. We're going to do that next. What does bed mass tell us? What does it help us with? What's it for? It's the order of operations. In other words, the order in which we do operations if there's more than one in a question. Very good. So it's the order of operations. Okay, and what is that order? What's the B? What's the E? Somebody else? Exponents, that's what we just talked about, very nice. No surprise that it's in there. Uh, what's the M? Multiplication. Multiplication. In what? I haven't, oh, oh my gosh. I thought you meant in one of the words, you mean in the whole thing. What's the D? Thank you, division. What's the A? And finally, the S, subtraction. Now I'm going to share a secret with you here, though. Not everywhere in the world spells it the same way. And the reason why I forgot the D was not because I sometimes spell it a different way, but you could spell it BEMDAS, and some people do spell it uh, 
PEMDAS with the M first. Um, why can we sometimes spell it differently? What's special about the D and the M? Yeah, those actually occur at the same time in the order in which they come. Now, there are some sort of except they're not really exceptions, but there are some cases where you do want to do one before the other, but we'll talk about those when we get there. So same with those and same with addition and subtraction. You do them from left to right the way we read questions. Bed mass. When do we use bed mass is the next question. Does anybody have any ideas on how to answer this? When do we use bed mass? So when an expression has more than one Operation, sure, I like that. Anybody want to add anything else? When do we use bed mass? Okay, good, I like that too. Anybody else? Any other ideas? To me, this is kind of a trick question because the answer is always. When do we use bed mass? We use it always. The reason why I make a big deal out of this is because at some point, somebody will probably do this even though I make a big deal out of this and that's fine, it happens. But like some, some, sometime in this class, somebody will be like, do we use bed mass for this? And I'll be like, oh my gosh, yes, of course we use bed What do you mean do we use bed mass? Bed mass is everything in mathematics. It's the rule that governs all of our mathematics. Sometimes you may not be aware that we're using it, but we're using it. Always, always, always. And under all circumstances, do the bed mass rules apply? You're correct in saying, if there's not more than one thing to do, you don't need to worry about bed mass, right? Like, uh, I get that. But do you use bed mass for this question? Yes. Of always using bed mass for everything, okay? There's never a time where bed mass doesn't apply. Okay, let's do some bed mass questions. Who knows what 16 minus 5 is? No. Sorry, what? Try again. 16 minus 5. 11. Everybody happy with that? No. Why? What's wrong? Oh my gosh, we forgot bed mass already. How could we have done that? Exactly. This is what, again, what happens though is we get caught up and we start thinking about other things and we start doing questions left to right. So be careful. So, what should I do first? The exponents. So in this case, I've got two operations, subtraction and exponent. And we do exponents first based on their bed mass rules, which tells us the order in which we do operations. And take a look. This isn't negative 5 squared. It's negative 5 squared. So shouldn't this one be, I get 16 minus 5 squared is 25. Now I do 16 minus 25. What's 16 minus 25? Integer questions. Negative nine. If I had done it the other way, which would be wrong, I guess I would have got 11 squared, which is 121. Not even close. So like order of operations matters. Okay, you're gonna get totally different numbers. What about the next one? How many operations does the next one have? Sometimes it's not always clear that to count them, but in this case, I think we can. How many operations? See a couple of hands. Anybody else?
What do you think? Why do you say four? Yeah, good. Now, the brackets is a bit of a different one because what it's really telling us to do is just do whatever's inside the brackets first. So it in and of itself isn't exactly an operation. And if you had said three, that would have been perfectly fine as well. So you could look at this as three or you could look at this as four. But it does say to do brackets first. So what happens inside the brackets? Three minus five? Very nice, negative two. And look, folks, that has to remain in brackets. Why? Yeah, why else? Oh, no. Didn't we just talk about how an exponent, a negative sign being in brackets or outside brackets matters? So if you drop the brackets, that might be changing the question. In some cases it will, in some cases it won't. Okay, so what this question is saying is the result of this cubed. That includes the negative. If you wrote this as negative 2 cubed, that's not the same thing. So it absolutely 100% matters. And then look, folks, this is how we show our work in bed mass. We write the whole question every single time. You don't just write the parts that you do. This is what people will want to do. Again, this is wrong. 3 minus 5 equals negative 2. Negative 2 cubed equals, what's negative 2 cubed? Thank you, negative 8. And then negative 8 plus 7 equals whatever. That's how people are going to want to do it. This is wrong, and you will get very few marks for this if you choose to do it this way on a test. I'm trying to give you an advance notice. So by the quiz next week, if you're doing it this way, you got to fix that. Okay? We do, we do 3 minus 5. We put the answer in place of where it was and we write the whole question down. This is like capitalizing your sentences. This is like writing in proper paragraph form. There's our first paragraph. What's our next paragraph? So we already talked about it. Negative two all cubed is negative eight. Negative eight plus seven? Negative one. Whoa, that one got bigger all of a sudden. Okay, this first part's easy. Three minus two? One. What's wrong? Oh, we did happen again. That's our brain playing tricks on us. It's even worse when your teacher asks you what the question is. It's not your fault. Don't worry. That's a, I'm tricking you on purpose. But this is what happens. It's so easy to do 3 minus 2. So you'll just do it. But if you stop and think, you're like, oh, no. And it's not just the brackets that comes first. What's actually, what's this operation right here? Multiplication. And don't we multiply before we add and subtract? Yes. So you may not put the 3 and the 2 together until you've done everything else and you get to the adding and subtracting stage. So let's work away at this. I write the whole question down. We do brackets first. Negative nine plus three. And look how it's still in brackets. Don't forget to write down the exponent. Do you have a question? You can give me the next part. What am I going to do next? I shouldn't be writing this out yet. Ah, this is a good one. So you're like, well, brackets, because brackets come first. These are different brackets. These are what I call organizational brackets. They're just for organizing, showing that this is multiplying, and showing that the negative is inside with the exponent. There are no longer brackets that have something inside to do. So brackets are finished. We move on to the next. What's the next letter in bed mass? Exponents. Is there an exponent? Yep. So we do that next. So what's negative 6 all squared? 36. Do you think it's negative or positive, though? If, it's ne if the negative is inside the brackets, 
Positive, very good, thank you. And remember, we think about it in two parts, so it's fine to get the first part and then take a moment and think about the next part and always like second guess yourself. And I'm gonna keep that in brackets. What was the multiplication, what was the uh, sign here? It was multiplication. So it has to be the same here. Some people might do this. Oh, well, it's positive 36. Okay, but you just changed it from multiply to add. That doesn't happen in mathematics. Okay, it was multiplication before. It's still multiplication. Now, bed mass, if you spell it right, which I didn't, uh, tells us division comes first. In this case, if you did it that way, you, you would get away with it. But um, remember what we said, we usually do, and it's safer to do division and multiplication in the order they come left to right in the question. And again, this is a little bit of a bigger number, but 2 times 36, does anybody know what that is? 72, 72 nice. So minus 72, because I had one negative and one positive. And this is again, oh, remember I said this yesterday. Is this a minus sign or a negative sign? Both sign? It's both, because this is negative 2 times 36, which is negative 72, so minus 72. I want to show you something. Don't write this down. What if this was uh, 3 minus 2 times negative 36? Then it would be 3, negative 2 times negative 36 is positive 72. It would be plus 72. The sign becomes the operation. Very tricky until you really get comfortable with that. Okay, moving on. And then divided by 3. Same deal. Negative 72 divided by 3. Anybody have that one? 24, nice. And a negative and a positive is a negative. 3 minus 24 is going to be negative 21. Everybody okay with that one? Got a couple more to do here. So what's different about this one is it's got a top and a bottom. And what is that what does that line in the between the top and the bottom mean? It's division. But we can't do this division in the order of bed mass. Just put your pencil down and watch for a minute. This is subtraction. This is subtraction. I'm supposed to divide before I subtract. How can I divide 3 minus 2 by 4 minus 3? Like, you can't do that step yet. You have to evaluate the whole top as if it's got brackets around it and evaluate the whole bottom as if it has brackets and then do the division as your last step. So this is necessary. So it's kind of like there are invisible brackets around the whole top and the whole bottom. So we, and we can do one step in the top and one step in the bottom together. The other thing that's curious about this is it has square brackets. Why do you think it has square brackets? Yeah, often if we have round brackets, We'll either use bigger round brackets and just make it clear, or we can use square brackets just so we can match up where the brackets start and finish. It doesn't come up that often, but it comes up once in a while. Okay, so 5 minus 3. Brackets first. Very good. See? Tricked you all again. Maybe not all of you, but some of you. Five. This is multiplication. I got to do brackets first. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. So I'm doing that on the top. What will we do in the bottom? I've got a double sign. So I'm going to change it to addition. That's right. It's going to be 6 plus 8. And notice how these, these round brackets around the negative 8 are just there because of the double sign. These square brackets are there for like bed mass brackets, telling us do this first. There's lots of layers to this. On top, what's my next thing to do? 
I've got subtraction and I've got multiplication. So we multiply first. Negative three, whoa. Negative three times negative one. Positive three. On the bottom, I'm going to do the bracket six plus eight. 14. Okay. And then I can finish up the last two steps. Uh, 5 plus 3 is 8. 14 divided by 7 is 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. You may not see it yet, but if I tried to do this question the way some people try to do bed mass, every step, the way I did in red above, do you remember when I did that? If I try to do this question that way, it would be all over the place. Nobody could follow your work. But once you get it, this, this flows. This makes sense. Anybody can follow what's happening from line to line to line. Notice we're going down, 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 always on top of each other, never sideways. That is absolutely paramount that we're doing the work that way. Any questions? I think we have one more here to do. I'm going to let you try it on your own. Jason, he's wondering, 2 plus 3 is 5. I can help you out with that part. We only have two minutes left, uh, but I just want to show you something. So look what I did on top. And you don't have to do it this way, but this is brackets, okay? And so I did that first. 1 minus 5 is negative 4. I also did this exponent. And with exp some of you might just be fine with this and be like, yep, that's cool. But some people might be like, well, hey, I thought you were only supposed to do like brackets first. But with experience, you start to realize sometimes – those parts aren't going to be put together until later. So they can be done like at the same time. Okay. But if you're not sure, do them in separate steps. Okay. And then on the bottom, I did the multiplication. Negative 2 times 8 is negative 16. 2 plus 3. Look at how that 2 plus 3 is calling out your name to turn it into a 5. 3 times negative 4 is minus 12. And then a positive and a negative 8 is minus 8. 15 minus 16 is negative 1. 2 minus 12 is negative 10. Negative 10 minus 8 is negative 18 over negative 1, which is positive 18. Did anybody get that already and got 18? Nicely done.